If you're anything like me, you probably already have your most precious data stored on a NAS and not on a computer. In my case, it's a Synology NAS, but that's already a great thing to do. But if you've been following my channel for a while, you probably already heard me say that if the data on your NAS is the only copy of your data, you're in a high risk of losing the data without being able to restore it. There are several ways to mitigate this risk and let me show you what I'm doing today using my trusty old DS923 Plus from Synology and I'm going to set it up as a secondary NAS. Let's go ahead. As a general rule of thumb, we need to comply at least as much as we can with a 3 to one backup strategy, meaning at least three copies of the data on two different media types, put an asterisk on that, and at least one of the copies needs to be off-site. So what I'm going to do with this DS923 Plus is I'm going to set it up as a secondary NAS and I'm going to place it physically in my parents' house. Now, nothing I do here is specific to Synology. You can do it with other types or brands of NAS. QNAP, TrueNAS, each one of them has its own backup mechanism. You can do it with a friend, with a neighbor, with a colleague. And all you have to do is just have some other place other than your primary NAS to backup the data to. So I'm going to take this DS923 Plus, I'm going to place to put drives in it. I'm going to set it up as a secondary NAS. Let's get cracking. All right, guys, so I connected the, the Synology device to the to power and to the network and I've already created a volume and I already created a shared folder. I'm trying to kind of skip steps that are outside the main goal or point of this video. So now that we have logged in to our Synology NAS, there are a few things or sort of a checklist that we need to do in order to make this device act and be configured as a secondary backup location. The first uh, item in the list is, of course, going to package center. And if this is indeed your secondary NAS, we will need to install Hyper Backup Vault on it. So let's go ahead and search for Hyper, Hyper Backup Vault. This will be, uh, this will need to be installed in the secondary NAS and Hyper Backup will need to be installed on the primary NAS. This is, of course, our secondary NAS, so we, we will install Hyper Backup Vault. That's item number one on our checklist. And it's already installed. It's a very tiny application. Let's go ahead and close out of here. Second item on our, uh, on our checklist is to make sure that at least in this uh, point in time where the Synology NAS is still in my network, in my house, and not yet in its final destination, my parents' house, I want to make sure that its IP address is a DHCP IP address and I can make sure it's DHCP right here. Now, it is recommended that the Synology NAS will be set up with a static IP address for sure, but I will do that only after I bring it over to my parents' house, connect it to their network, and after it get, grabs an IP address from their network, then I will make sure to set it up with a static IP address. So that's item number two on our checklist and we'll go to item number three item number three is user accounts now in my specific case i will be the one that actually manages this synergy box but that's not maybe not the case for you so if you're backing up to a friend's synergy NAS, you will need to make sure that they will create a user account for you still in control panel user and groups users now i do make i do uh, recommend that if you're giving out a user to a friend or a friend gives out a user to you make it not an administrator account so for all intents and purposes let's go ahead and create a user let's give it a name demo account click on next or sorry set a password for it of course Now, the stronger the password, the better, of course. Make sure it's not, or at least I recommend that it will not be a member of the administrators. 
let's go ahead and click next but we do want to make sure that this user has read and write permissions to the shared folder that will hold the backup data of course click on next now it's up to you if you want to assign a quota for example if you and your friend or neighbor are assigning 500 gigs to each other this is where you will assign the 500 gigs this is not the the, the case in my specific case but this is where you'll you'll set the quota up click on next click on next next and done the user account is created i'm not going to use it but this is how you'll create a user account for example for your friend or for your colleague and that's item number three item number four since it's something that synology provides for its users for free and it will make it easier later on i do recommend that you take use of the ddns service in still in control panel in external access in the ddns tab this will just give you a much easier host name to reference the, the, the synergy box instead of using ip addresses and this will relate to the next item on our list but for now let's go ahead and create a new ddns entry click on add the service provider will be synology Pick a host name for your, for your NES. And I also recommend to get a certificate from Let's Encrypt because why not? And click on OK. At this point, you will need to log into your Synology account. If you haven't got one, do you will you will need to create one. Alright, this process is done, and now we have a host name that we will be able to reference later on in the process and now we're getting to the next item in our checklist and this is a bit more complex and outside uh, the scope of this video we need to make sure that the communication between the two sites is allowed since both me and my parents house are in a unify using unify consoles we already have a, a site magic based site to site vpn and i already have the firewall rules configured to allow the communication that not might be the case for you. You will probably need to use port forwarding to make sure that the communication can be allowed in each site. Again, it's outside the scope of this video. There are other ways to do it, of course, like VPNs, etc. But if you are going to use the port forwarding option, you will need to know which port to forward. And in this case, Synology does an excellent job in documenting, in documenting, sorry, which ports are needed for each application now let me save you the trouble a little bit the ports that we are looking for are these ports hyper backup vault it's 6281 tcp this is the port you will need to forward and of course you will need to know the internal ip address of the synology NES in order to to forward the port to but now all we have to do is to shut down our Synology NES or the secondary Synology NES and of course drive it over to the destination physically. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Let me switch over to my Synology NES, close out of, he out of here and shut down. Several days later. The DS923 Plus has arrived to its destination. It's powered on, connected to network and we can now finish configuring it. All right, so the secondary device, as we saw, is now physically located in my parents' house. I've connected it to the network and to power and powered it on, of course. So go ahead and log in. And as you recall, currently, this device has an IP address that is DHCP list. And now is the time that we'd want to change that into a static IP address. So go ahead and do that. Let's go into control panel network interface select the interface and click edit and now we'll give it a static ip address of course from the subnet of my parents house network but outside the scope of the dhcp leases of course all right that's the ip address that's the subnet mask that's the gateway that's the dns all the other uh, uh, parameters are correct 
let's click on OK. And in about a minute or two, the web service will be restarted with the new IP address. All right, so we are logged in to the device using the new IP address, which is this address right here. Of course, there are other still some security related settings and other settings that are outside the, the main goal of this, uh, this video. But basically, we are done configuring this device to be a secondary target for our uh, primary device. Alright, so this is actually my primary Synology NES and as you can as you can see I opened up Hyper Backup and you can see that I'm already backing up things to Synology's C2 a cloud service and the reason I'm doing that if I only relied on this secondary Synology device I wouldn't or I wouldn't be compatible with a 3 to 1 backup strategy I wouldn't have 3 copies of my data so for my critical or most critical data, I'm also backing up a third copy to a separate location. In this case, it's C2. All right, that's outside the point. Let's create a new backup task. Let's click on next. We'll select a remote NES device, of course. Now we can give it the IP address of my secondary device. Or if, if you are backing up to a secondary device that is not a, a device that you manage, uh, uh, of course, if you recall, I told you to configure the DDNS uh, uh, address in this tab right here. So now you will be able to place in this host name of the secondary device using the DDNS service. And you have done everything correct. And if you have done everything correctly on the network layer, or the port forwarding, you will be able to reach the secondary device using the host name. In my specific case, I'm using the LAN IP address. Click on trust, click on login. Let's use a password login. In my case, I will use the admin, uh, admin account, even though it might not be the case for you. So if your friend or colleague or neighbor, neighbor created the user account for you, that will be the place you will enter the user account you are given. Let's click on submit. Let's select the shared folder that will be the folder that will hold the backup data on the secondary device. Let's click on next. Now we'll select which folders on the primary device we want to backup to the secondary device. Let's select just the one and I will continue it later. Let's click on next. Next, let's give it a name. Now, of course, set a schedule that fits your use case. Let's click on next. I'm not going to keep 256 versions. I'm only going to be happy with just the five. That will be plenty for me. Click on next. Click on done. I'm not going to back up right now. I am going to do it a bit later, but if you're set with all the configurations, you can go ahead and launch a manual backup by clicking yes. I'm going to click on no, but actually that's it. We have configured the secondary device and we have configured the primary device to back up to the secondary device. This was the main goal of this video. I hope you like it and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye everyone.